in the National School Walkout. It will last for 17 minutes in honor of the 17 victims at Marjorie Stoneman High School shooting in Parkland, Florida, one month to the day. Joining us now from Parkland is a senior at Florida's Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School, David Hogg. David, good morning. It's, it's good to see you. I want to talk about the walkout and your objectives here in a minute, but it strikes me as I see you guys on TV and, and listen to you, you've been thrust forward as, as advocates and good for you for raising your voices, but I haven't heard much about how you're doing. You guys suffered an unimaginable trauma in school that day. How are you doing? How are your classmates doing? We're all doing as good as we could be. Uh, this is an unimaginable tragedy that nobody ever thinks will happen to them. Nobody should ever think would happen to them, but it can and it does. Sadly, that's what happened here at, in Parkland. But I think what the difference this time is, is that we're all standing up and we aren't closing up like many communities before us have. We're opening up to the world and the nation to show and expose the wounds that we have acquired as a community so that no other city, no other club, and no other, no other person has to be affected in such a negative way. Hi. Hi, Hi David, it's Heidi Presbella. Thanks for being up this early. Um, what is next? We're going to have this march, and certainly this is going to draw a lot of attention to the issue. But at the same time, I'm sure you're following what's going on in Washington and seeing that the chances of major movement on gun legislation um, is evaporating by the day. You have an election coming up. Do you see uh, these threads uh, between all of the different students who are or organizing in different cities as part of a new grassroots movement? And, and what do you think will happen in the run-up to the election? I think what's going to happen in the run-up to the election is if our elected officials don't take responsibility for their inaction on both sides of the aisle, then we are going to kick them out of office. We are their bosses as the American democracy, and if they don't serve us like the representatives that they're supposed to be, that's okay because, one, we'll kick them out of office by not re-electing them, and two, they'll be remembered in our history, bo in our history books that my generation writes as the cowards that they are because they don't take action. Let me We've seen so many thousands of people die with no, inaction, with no action, and now we're here to change that. And the way that we really continue this movement, even after the march, is having more school walkouts until legislative action is taken. Because this is ridiculous. <laughs> How should we be expected to go to school and do our job as students if our elected officials won't? Why should we have to? Uh, you know, David, uh, all of us have, uh, most of us have children who are in school right now. It's deeply affected them. I suspect everybody, regardless of their position on uh, the Second Amendment and what the Second Amendment is and is not, uh, have to talk to their children before they go to school. Uh, it is interesting that we had John Della Volpe from uh, Harvard's mm -hmm. Institute of Politics talking about polling numbers that I've seen before that are fascinating, uh, that millennial voters, while more progressive on just about every other issue, actually are more conservative when it comes to guns. Obviously, uh, those of, of you that have, have taken the lead after Parkland uh, are, are not in 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 that uh, position. Uh, but I'm wondering, what message do you have, instead of just to elected leaders, what message do you have to your own generation and to other millennials who are more conservative than most would expect on this issue? I, one thing I think is important to remember about those polls is conservative students and conservative people of the millennial generation are typically a lot more politically active, so the polls may be biased in that way because many students that have more liberal views may just not partake in them, so there may be a skew in the polls that way. And also I think it's important to realize for the students out there that, are, um, that want to know what to do next, it's get out and vote. Research what your who your politicians are even. Know what they do. Know who they're supported by legislatively. And know who's supporting them financially for their campaigns. Because ever since Citizens United, we've seen an ex a massive growth in the amount of campaign contributions and corruption in politics as a result. And that has to change. Sadly, our parents haven't done so, so my generation does. All right, David, thank you so much for being David with Hogg. us. Uh, we greatly appreciate it. Incredible. Still ahead on Morning Joe. I hate to put this pressure on you, Rick. They're all watching because I won this district like by 22 points. It's a lot.
That's why I'm here. Look at all those red hats, Rick. Look, look at all those hats. It's a lot of hats. And we just had a poll. We're more popular now than we were on Election Day. This guy should win easily, and he's going to win easily. Wow, nothing like setting somebody up for the fall. He did not win easily. No, he didn't. Hey, a lot of red hats out there. Yeah. <laughs> All right. It's painful. Uh, yeah, In fact, it doesn't look like the president's him. candidate won yeah. at all. We're going to talk to the apparent winner of the closely watched Pennsylvania House race. Democrat Connor Lamb will join us live. We're back in 90 seconds. Thanks for checking out MSNBC on YouTube and make sure you subscribe to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories and you can click on any of the videos around us to watch more for Morning Joe and MSNBC. Thanks so much for watching.